All right, so I'm canning some beef stew, and I kind of did a little different angle so y'all can see me a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So I got some, my husband went down to our local meat packing company and got uh, 10 pounds of beef uh, stew mm -hmm. already cut up. This is a half of it. I've already used half. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing with these jars, but it's really nice But you want your uh, beef stew to be cut up into cubes about one inch so that they process well. All right, so preferably I would use all wide mouth jars, but I, I don't have any other wide mouth jars, but I have plenty of regular mouth jars, so I'm going to use those instead. So, you know, with not being able to find the jars that you want, wide mouth, I don't have that many wide mouth jars. So I'm putting about this much stew meat in each jar, and then I'm putting potatoes and carrots, okay? But I'll show you all the seasonings that I put in this, this stew. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put one beef bouillon, and I'm gonna, I only have the cubes, I don't have the granules, so this is what I'm gonna do. Put it in a little bowl, and it's got like a little mortar and pestle, and I'm going to grind that up. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of my own homemade garlic powder, a teaspoon of minced onion. And the reason why I'm doing minced onion rather than regular or just chopped up onion, which you could do that if you wanted to, is just I can get more potatoes and more carrots in there if I don't take up space with my onions. So I'm using minced. But do what you want to do. Canning is like kind of like cooking. When you first learn to cook, you go by a recipe. And then after you learn your canning principles, you can just do what you want to do. You don't have to do what everybody else wants to do. And one teaspoon of Montreal steak seasoning. I love this stuff. And then I'm just going to put a couple of big spoonfuls of tomatoes, diced tomatoes. I have my own canned tomatoes, but I have this in a jar in a can, so I wanted to kind of get rid of it, so I'm using that. Now, then you just fill it up with water. I'm not going to fill it all the way up so that I can kind of debubble and not make such a mess. I think I've showed y'all before. This is a good one. See that big air pocket right there? That's a big air pocket we're gonna get rid of with our debubbling. See, big air pocket. There's some more right there. So that's why you de you have to debubble. Just a little bit more water so they have one inch head space. Got some a paper towel with a little bit of vinegar on it. And wipe the rims, especially with you to kind of do any kind of meat so you don't have any kind of residue on that root surface of that rim of your jar. So this has been a steady stream for 10 minutes. I had a timer on it, so now I'm gonna put my weight on. So I put the weight on, we're gonna let this start jiggling, and then we're gonna start the timer. 90 minutes for quarts, uh, 75 minutes for pints. So I've got this other canner going, but this one has uh, been going for the 90 minutes, 
and I've turned it off and it's completely depressurized and you can tell that by this little uh, pressure valve going down and I don't have any more steam coming off when I take off my waste. So, we're going to do that. We're going to open it up. We're going to take the lid off, but we're going to take it off where, it, where it's away from me so all that steam is back there. Because it is still going to be very hot. And I'm going to let it sit here for about five minutes, and then I will take the jars out of the can. not had any siphoning. We had one jar might have had some siphoning. So that's pretty good. Okay. This jar had a little bit of siphoning. That won't hurt the food inside. That just happens sometimes, especially with vegetables that are raw packed. That can happen. 